and welcome back. Let's get ready to set up port forwarding. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that this might be very technical for some. Let's take a deep breath. Okay, here is our current setup. We have a router modem that our global cache controller is connected to, but Eddie can't communicate to your controller because it's protected by your router's firewall. What we are going to do is open a port on your firewall to allow Eddie to be able to communicate with your controller. That's the goal of this video, which is setting up port forwarding. The cost is free, which is great, this process should take about 15 to 30 minutes and is dependent on several factors. You need to have access to your router and have a smartphone or tablet. Why do we need a smartphone or tablet? Well, we are going to need to install an app to make the setup process easier. First things first though, we must make sure we have access to your router. If you don't access your router or can't get someone to change the setting for you, then you can't set up port forwarding. Your internet provider might be able to help. If this is the case, try setting up Eddie Bridge. Moving on, we need to get the admin user, password, or device access code. In most cases, at least in the United States, the admin user and password is located on your router modem. But what if your user and password is not on the router? Here is what you can do. Look for your router's manual. The default user, pass, should be there. If you can't find the manual, try Googling your router's model number plus password. This can be frustrating, so have some patience. The last thing you can do is call your internet provider for help. Okay, I hope you found your admin user and password. Next, we need to find three IPs, one, your internet address, also called WAN IP. Two, your gateway, which is your router's LAN IP. And three, your controller LAN IP. To do this, we need to install Fing. Okay, but what's a Fing? Fing is a network scanner to help scan and troubleshoot any network. It's safe and has been around for years. It's a great little tool. Let's install it via the App Store. I'm going to install the app on my iPad. Let's look for Fing. If you have an Android, then go to the Google Play Store to download the app. Both links to the Apple and Google Play Store are found in the notes at the bottom of the video. This looks like it's it. Let's download it and wait for Fing to install. Open the app and make sure you are connected to the wireless network that your controller is on. What does that mean? We want to make sure both your smartphone or tablet and your controller are on the same network. Scroll down and look for your controller's IP address. The device name should be Global Cache. Click on it. Write the controller's IP address. This will be used later. Let's go back and click on your network name. It's at the top. Okay. Scroll down on this page and we want to write down your router's IP address and your WAN's IP address. This will be used later. That wasn't that bad, right? Okay, we are almost done. We have everything we need, but now it's time for the most difficult part. This is difficult because your router and my router are going to be different and my steps will not match yours. Again, let me repeat myself. These steps are going to be different for you and me. Let me set this up on my router and the rules should be very similar. 
but sadly not the same. What are we going to do? We are going to log into your router and add a port forwarding rule. Remember, our goal is to set up a port forwarding rule and make sure it's enabled so Eddie can talk to your controller. Let's log into your router using the admin and password we wrote down. We are going to use a web browser and type our router's IP address into the address bar and hit enter. Remember, we found this IP using Fing. I am using my laptop, but you can do this on your phone or tablet if you wanted to. Okay, no login was needed yet, but you might need to log in to your router. Once you are logged in, look for firewall or advanced networking. I see customized firewall. This looks like it has something to do with our firewall. So let's click on it. Okay, so we want to set up a new rule. This is step two. Let's scroll back up and pick up our controller. Okay. Our controller is selected. Now we need to make a new firewall rule. Here it says, add new user defined application. This is what we want. Let's click on it. This setup is not usual, but let's continue. We want to name this something simple like IR port 4998. So we know what this is for. The protocol type is always TCP. For IR external port range, use port 4998 to 4998, meaning only one port. Leave the timeout as default. Also, the controller's internal port is always 4998. I don't know what this application type is, so I'm going to leave it alone and click on Add to List. Okay, finally we got a prompt to enter our access code. I'm going to enter it now and hit Submit. Note that my firewall setting is different than yours, but your rule should be the same, which is Protocol TCP, external port 4998, internal port will always be 4998. Okay, I'm going to hit back. It looks like my controller got deselected. I'm going to reselect it again. Okay, now the controller is selected. I'm going to search for the new firewall rule and assign it by adding it to the controller. Click add. Okay, looks like we did it and assigned the new rule to the controller. But I'm going to hit save just in case. That's it, we are done setting up port forwarding. Now we can go to the website and click on the verify host button. Thanks and see you next time.